and welcome back once again. So in our last video we took a look at 3D milling operations and this time we're going to take a look at 2D milling operations. So you can see that we have our toolpath still showing up here. We have our parallel finishing uh, operation all set up. I'm going to turn off toolpath so I can just look at what I've got here. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my two axis tab or two axis button <clears throat> under machining operations. You'll see again under two axis milling we have a whole bunch of varieties of operations from chamfering to pocketing to profiling etc. What we want to work with is engraving. So the difference between 2D milling and 3D milling is primarily is the fact that with 2D milling you're really focused on working with a path instead of a three-dimensional object. And you also typically have a standard Z depth. You don't vary the Z depth as much um, in 2D milling as you do 3D milling. So as I said, we're going to click on the engraving tab. Once again, a window opens up and we're going to do two separate operations. We want to do one set of operations to get rid of this chunk of material right here to create that sort of channel. And then we're going to do another operation to create the border. So for our paths, what we need to do is, of course, select the drive containment regions. So I'll click on that button, and I'm just going to go through, and I'm going to select each one of those paths. Now, I drew these paths myself, and I have set them up so that they are um, offset by a quarter inch. We're using a half inch bit, but I don't want it to plow through an entire half inch of material at a time. So it's going to be plowing through a quarter inch of material at a time. So I'll grab those and then I'll grab these. Right click to accept that and there are my drive regions. For the tool, we're using the exact same tool, the half inch flat mill bit. Feeds and speeds, those can all remain exactly the same. For our clearance plane, we can see that it's already set up and you can see the visualization of that right here that red surface right there it's set up to be an inch above my actual material. Cut parameters. So <clears throat> here's where things get interesting for us. We have issues of tolerance. We have what is called natural direction versus reverse direction. We're going to leave that at its default. <clears throat> we have the location of the cut geometry, which we're setting at the top because we've drawn it at the top or we can actually pick where the top is, but let's leave that at default. This is the one we're really concerned with, cut depth control. This is where we specify how deep to make the cut. So I know for a fact that that is an inch from there to there, and that is an inch from there to there. So I want to mill an inch into this material. So the total cut depth is going to be one inch. <clears throat> now you notice that I have a slider under here as well that says rough depth and finish depth. Rough depth refers to it doing a single pass and you can see from this little diagram right here rough depth it's just going to plow right on through finish depth it's actually going to break the finish depth down into a series of smaller steps for us so what we'll do is we'll only have it plow about maybe now let's go for three quarters of an inch into the material just so we can see what that looks like and as you can see rough is going to be three quarters of an inch and finish is going to be a quarter of an inch. Uh, then you have cut travel between cut levels. We're good at leaving it at zigzag because that means it's going to go back and forth. Entry and exit. We don't really need to worry about this. We could specify very specific motions for its entrance and exit. And then sorting. We don't need to worry about sorting either. Leave, all, leave this as default uh, with no sort. So I'm going to click on generate and you'll see that now I have another operation represented as a folder right here called engraving. And if I want, I can come out and actually simulate what that's going to look like by selecting engraving and hitting play. <laughs> and you'll see, because my speed is really fast, it just goes right through there. So I'll hit play again, and even at a slow speed, it goes pretty quick. But as you can see, that's the channel that we're now milling out of that object. So let's repeat this process, this time, for our border. So we can actually create a border around our material. Now when we create our border, we're not going to have it cut 
all the way down through the material. We're going to have it cut uh, three quarters of the way through the material so that when we pull our piece off of the mill, our piece is still this big, but it has a nicely etched border around it. The reason for that is, well, if we cut all the way through, we've got to actually then anchor our milled piece down to the table. We've actually got to press it down to the table because the amount of torque uh, um, coming from the tool bit itself. You can think about if I start uh, doing an operation here where it's cutting a border, turning, cutting and turning, cutting and turning, by the time it gets over here, the only piece of our stock material that's still holding on to this is this area here. And as the mill moves this way, that connection is getting thinner and thinner and thinner until the point that it actually cuts it out. So there's a worry that we might actually rip the little sort of tenuous connection that's there. So by cutting three quarters of the way through, I can then take this over to a bandsaw or even just use um, a little scroll saw to cut and finish my piece. So I'm going to turn off that material layer again. I'm going to go to two axis and I'm going to go to engraving. Actually, I'm going to make sure that before I do that, that I have the first engraving operation, which I can rename. So let's rename that. And I'm going to call that engraving channel so that I know there's a difference. I'm going to make sure this is selected. The reason why I want to make sure that I have this selected instead of, say, having parallel finishing selected is that in this hierarchical chain of operations, whatever I have currently selected will operate as the um, uh, the second to last oper a milling operation. If I selected parallel finishing and then went through and created a new engraving operation, it would place that engraving operation directly below parallel finishing. So it's a good idea to sort of choreograph how you're going to perform these operations. So I'm going to go to two axis. I'm going to go to engraving. Uh, I'm going to clear these regions now because you can see these regions are already showing up. It still highlighted those channels. So I'm just going to go to remove all and then I'm going to click on select drive containment region. And I'm going to select that border. Now again, this border is actually offset by the radius of my tool bit. If I go to a top view, you'll notice that this is where I want my piece to end but I've offset that border by a quarter of an inch. Because the, this line is the center line for the tool. So the tool bit has a bit that comes over this far and that, that far. So go back to perspective. I have that selected. Right click to accept it. There you go. Let's go to our tool. We're using the same tool, fees and speeds. We're all good here. Let's go to our clearance plane and see that it's set to one inch above maximum Z. For cut parameters, <clears throat> excuse me, this time I'm going to set a total cut depth of 1.5 inches. And this time I'm also going to have it, well, let's do it this way. Let's have a even and even here. So the rough cutting depth is going to be three quarters of an inch. The finished cutting depth is going to be three quarters of an inch. As there's less and less material for um, uh, less, and less and less material connecting our milled piece to the stock, I want to basically slow down or lessen the amount of the, the amount of impact on that cut area. Entry and exit, all good there. Sorting, all good there. Let's hit generate. As we can see. A new engraving operation has showed up. I'm going to rename that to call that engraving border. And let's simulate the whole thing now. So maybe we'll actually, well, yeah, we'll do it in perspective. And you know what? We'll turn off our machining op uh, objects window there so we can see this whole thing. So let's go to simulate and let's go to play. We'll speed this one up because that took a while. And now I'll start. There you go. So as we can see, we now have that bit of material cut out and we have a border running around our entire piece. Beauty. Exactly what I want. 
Now, we want to check as well to make sure we know how long it's going to take to perform that operation. And that's going to be three minutes to engrave the channels <clears throat> and almost two minutes to do the border. <clears throat> now, if I'm all set with this, if this looks perfect, just the way I want it and everything, what I need to do is I need to post this to what's called an NC file. I need to tell RhinoCam that I'm ready to cut. Please convert this to a file that our mill will understand. The way you do that is you click on the folder that represents all of these operations, right click, and you go to post. You check to make sure that your current post is set to Techno ESL. Then you give it a name. I would suggest your last name and then the file sequence. So let's say you're cutting six files. So this is one of six. And then you hit post. Give it a second to crunch through some numbers. And believe it or not, this is your file. This is all G-code that is telling the router exactly how to move to cut out your piece. <clears throat> now, you could actually export all of these as separate operations. So if I right-clicked on the parallel finishing folder and I went to post, I would only export the parallel finishing information. That's helpful if you're using a bunch of different tool bits. If you're using, say, a half-inch tool bit to create large openings in here, but then you want to use a quarter-inch tool bit to make a really fine pass, you would export the <clears throat> rough operation as one post, and then you would export another operation as another post. Since we're using the exact same bit for all three operations, we can post everything in one file. That lessens the amount of time because you don't have to keep uploading new files to the router. That covers the basics of milling using a basic three-dimensional operation, in this case parallel finishing, and using a two-axis operation, in this case engraving. More videos will be posted momentarily that will include um, performing operations uh, uh, where you're doing 3D roughing um, as well as um, parallel finishing. We'll go over that later. Good luck.